Now, see, that Irish music is a few days late. Our church gave us a dispensation last Friday telling us uh, instead of eating fish that we could eat, well, what they, they didn't say what for, but they meant corned beef and cabbage, which I refused to eat. As I said last week, no self-respecting Irishman. It's a New York City invention. It's, it has, so I, I went and had a fish fry instead. On uh, I was in Hanson, so I got a fish fry there that was absolutely delicious, which I highly recommend. But I'm not sure that they're an advertiser at that particular particular cafe, so I can't go into detail because there are other people who advertise with us who do a marvelous fish fry as well, I would I would guess. I just haven't been out on Fridays that often to, to check that out. Uh, Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. A couple of sad notes. Uh, follow up to what happened in Rockville, Maryland last week. We had a discussion about this on the program yesterday. Liberals continue to insist, well, the Democrat Party wants votes. And they believe that they're going to be able to mine votes from illegal immigrants if they give them amnesty, bring them here by the, by the train loads, as well as refugees. Because these people, starting out, you give them a, call it a stipend. You give them welfare is what you give them. Housing assistance, rental assistance, you know, promise them the sun, moon, and the stars, and you'll get their votes. And you hope then that you'll get their votes no matter if they build even a big business here and they become very successful, you, you have a belief you're still going to continue their, uh, getting their votes for a couple of generations. Seems to be the only way Democrats can win elections any longer. And I think that's one of the reasons you have so much difficulty going on in this country, people willing to bury their heads in the sand. I was listening to a sound clip on a program from Fox News. Tucker Carlson has been, he's doing better ratings than Megyn Kelly did in his time slot. And I think it's because he is a bulldog when it comes to how he conducts an interview with some of the guests that are on the air. And he had a liberal Maryland politician on the show with him by the name of Zeke Cohen. And they got into a little bit of a snit about this alleged rape in Rockville, Maryland, which is a suburb of Washington, D.C., which is the home to a lot of federal bureaucrats, most of whom are also Democrats because well, it's their livelihood. And so big government means big paychecks for them. And yet now they've been confronted with their own policy and the downside of their own policy. Nobody out there, even Donald Trump said some, not all, when he mentioned murderers and rapists coming from south of the border. Nobody is trying to besmirch an entire race of people here. That's not happening. On the other hand, if these illegal aliens hadn't been here and hadn't been in that school, uh, that young lady wouldn't have had her life scarred. And she is scarred for life because of what happened. So listen to this exchange between Tucker Carlson and this flaming liberal politician from the state of Maryland. You know, it's pretty unbelievable that you would compare ICE, federal immigration authorities, to the Nazis, which you just ineffected, and you did explicitly yesterday, when... They're enforcing laws that would have prevented this heinous crime. Would you say that to the parents of the girl who was raped? These are Nazis, these Americans who are enforcing immigration laws? Why would you say something like that? So I extend my full sympathy to these parents. What they've been through is horrific. And to trot their crime out publicly is really kind of shameful, Tucker. And I think that the politics you're engaging in is this sort of Willie Horton-style uh, race baiting, um, dog whistle, where, you know, we don't blame entire groups of people for the, the heinous acts of a few. For example, we're not no, after I'm Dylan not, Roof wait, wait, hold on, murdered hold on. nine people in a church in South Carolina. You know, we don't say your, that all pardon, white people Zeke, are terrorists. I, wait, oh, so, 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 slow down. I, I'm not saying that all Hispanics are terrorists. I'm not saying anything like that. You're the one who explicitly compared federal immigration authorities to Nazis. Who's using the dog whistle here? Who's making demagogic statements? They're Nazis? You're calling fellow American citizens Nazis for enforcing federal law? Yeah, there you go. That's, well, it's the knee-jerk reaction from liberals to call everybody a Nazi or Hitler or a racist or a bigot when, when they aren't going to be able to win an argument otherwise. Cal Thomas, syndicated columnist 
has this, and I pulled it down from the Washington Times today. And he writes, a letter sent to parents from Rockville High School officials said, ensuring a safe and secure and welcoming learning environment for all of our students is a top priority. Our staff remains vigilant in the monitoring of our school each and every day. And then he has a two-word paragraph following that. He writes, apparently not. Among the many questions that should be asked is why these two men, both old enough to be seniors, were placed in a freshman class in the first place. They were given a translator to help them understand what the teacher said in English, but the word that describes that ludicrous decision is easily understood in both English and Spanish. Estupido. Equally stupid, he writes, is a bill the legislature has put together that would declare Maryland a sanctuary state. If it passes and survives a likely veto veto by Republican Governor Larry Hogan, it would shield illegal immigrants from federal immigration laws. Welcome to modern America. And they're going to be welcoming more of these types of crimes if they continue with this. 840, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. It's 34. Take some of your telephone calls in just a few minutes. On this subject as well as we're going to be talking about a related story, and that's what happened in London yesterday. Yeah, open the floodgates and let them in. Do you think that perhaps some of those judges who are legislating from the bench because they don't like some of Donald Trump's campaign remarks, maybe having second thoughts? How do you, how do you, if someone walks up to one of these judges in a restaurant and says, how do you rule that way when little girls are being raped in school bathrooms or when you look at what's happening in London? Did you see the photograph of the one woman, blood coming from her mouth? She's on her back, and it's in some of the newspapers today. She's on London, not London Bridge, but it's the bridge in London approaching Parliament, and she was among the people who was struck by the car. And she's looking at the photographer, blood streaming from her mouth, which means, of course, she obviously had some internal injuries. London's mayor is saying, of course, he's one of them. Well, he's not violent that we know of, at least not yet. 842, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We'll get to our callers in just a moment. It's 36. Going to be down near the freezing mark tonight. So we're not quite out of the woods when it comes to the really nasty weather yet. If you are having some issues with your furnace as we near the end of the cold months, you need to call the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. They'll come out and get the job done. They'll get it done right. They'll get it done right the first time. Problem-free cozy winters found at Ramsey Heating and Electric. 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Call them. The number is 678-0459. That's Ramsey Heating and Electric. 678-0459, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. Caller, you're up next. Thanks for your patience. You're on the air. Yes, um, you know, um, what happened with the house, I don't know how the bill was, where they want to make a, a you know Maryland a sanctuary state, and uh, they still voted for that. And I know you said this, but you say to yourself, when the people of Maryland are so brain dead or in, inactive, willfully inactive, that they allow their representatives, state representatives, who they live by, who they can contact easily, and when they allow these things to occur. And then they come out and say, why, what have you got, you know, this terrible rape. I mean, this little girl is 14 years old. I have 14-year-old granddaughters. I've said that. But she was sodomized more than once. I mean, if that isn't the most, I mean, how would you describe that in a way that would effectively say what that will hap- what will happen to that girl? I mean, if you... The people of Maryland are, are to be held accountable, too. And then this Zach Cohen, this incoherent logic, this sorry SOB, I mean, I would go down to his house and I would confront him in, into his face. Because, you see, when, these, when our elected officials don't do their job or their logic is so skewed that you say to yourself, somehow or other, we've got to do something. And of course, thank God we elected Trump. I'm hanging up. See ya. Hey, thank you much for the for the telephone call. The people of Maryland, I, I lived out on the eastern shore. I lived just on the state line with Delaware and Maryland, right on the Mason-Dixon line, in fact. Some of the stones are still out there from uh, from the, the measurements that were taken. The people on the eastern side of that Chesapeake Bay are overwhelmingly conservative Republicans. 
overwhelmingly. But the state is dominated by Baltimore, and a lot of people in Baltimore simply are wards of the state. And the state keeps telling them, if you vote for Democrats, we'll get you more free stuff. We'll take it from somebody else, and we'll give it to you. And, uh, and you know, when you get upset now and then, we'll allow you to go out and burn CVS drugstores and smash police cars, which is what the mayor of Baltimore did a couple of years ago. Because you wouldn't want to upset them because if you said, well, you've got to behave, they might not vote for you then. So this, and, and Rockville is a nice, nice community. It, and, and so this little girl being raped there, probably you have people over on the other side who are still so angry because they feel, <clears throat> well, let's be honest. They feel that they're in their situation, in their bad neighborhood, and they blame the man. And the man is a white guy. And so this girl coming from a pretty good neighborhood and a pretty good suburb likely isn't going to get a lot of sympathy from those people. That's the sad part of it, number one. And the gravy train keeps coming, so they're going to vote for the gravy train and not for even their own safety and security. And they don't seem to realize that these people who are coming here are also competing with them for the few opportunities and the breadcrumbs that may be left behind. Again, do they know what $20 trillion is? Do they know that the country's $20 trillion in debt? They don't read the newspaper. They don't listen to the radio, at least the, the news end of it. They're not up to speed with all of this. So they just think that the gravy train is something that's going to always come and keep coming. And they keep voting for it, for that reason. Meanwhile, while we're having that type of violence here, across the pond in England, they're still dealing with the fallout from yesterday. Here we go again. England has a Muslim mayor. His name is Sadiq Khan. Why do they have a Muslim mayor? Because the city has been overrun by Muslims. And they now elect the politicians, at least on the uh, on the urban level, if not on the national level, but... They've already bragged that someday, over the palace, there's going to be flying the flag of ISIS. This is the mayor of uh, uh, London uh, trying to offer a few bromides to the dead. I want to express my gratitude on behalf of all Londoners to the police and emergency services who've shown tremendous bravery in exceptionally difficult circumstances. In London suffered a horrific attack near Parliament Square, which we're treating as a terrorist attack. Okay, and... Well, we went out and we made a lot of other arrests. And? Well, we went out and made a lot of other arrests. Here in our studio, we have a, a portrait of Paul Harvey fishing in the Snake River Canyon. Now, referencing my previous discussion about what happened in Maryland, Paul Harvey used to say when it comes to convicted rapists, maybe the punishment, and this was what he would say, and he would say it on hundreds of radio stations, that the punishment should be the removal of the offending organ. And he said that would be a tremendous deterrent. The problem is, in England, they don't know the meaning of deterrence as well. And what you do is you round up these people, and since Europe doesn't have capital punishment, these associates of this man who are apparently in cahoots with him, he's dead. That's a good thing. I guess he's waking up somewhere today and realizing, oh, I do not have my 72 versions. Or perhaps I could get too slightly used. Maybe his cohorts should all swing from a gallows. And maybe we should start fighting back with these people because all they know is violence. Trying to dialogue with them isn't working. The great Englishman, Nigel Farage, appearing on his own radio show in London. I'm surprised that the government even allows him on air. He called out the city's Muslim mayor. But back in September... You know, he said that, unfortunately, these things are part and parcel of living in a modern major city. I don't want these things ever to be part and parcel of living in a modern major city. And much as I, over the years, uh, more than anybody, have been critical of big government, concerned uh, about organisations, looking at our data or following and tracking what we're doing, uh, I genuinely believe that in the greater good we have to be 100% behind our police and security services in this country. They need the tools to do this job. They've done a very good job. It's 10 years since this last happened in London. I hope it's longer than that before the next one. And the thing is, you listen to that, and you realize the mayor of that city said, this is an acceptable loss. These are acceptable losses. 
What he's telling the public is, you know, jihad is the new normal, so therefore just get used to it. And we'll hold our heads up high, and we'll tell the world that we're a diverse culture, and that we're better people than that. And therefore, we frowned upon folks getting run over and policemen being stabbed. But we're better people than that. And if we just show them how we're diverse and loving, eventually, Ahmed will come around. But in the meantime, if your child gets killed, well, that's an acceptable loss. It's the same mindset that you heard out of this fellow arguing with Tucker Carlson the other night. The same mindset that says somebody's little girl is an acceptable loss. Farage was appearing last night on Fox News with Sean Hannity and uh, explains how this all got started. Well, we've made some terrible mistakes in this country, and it really started with the election of Tony Blair back in 1997, who said he wanted to build a multicultural Britain. Uh, he uh, even, his government said later, they sent out search parties to find immigrants from all over the world uh, to come into Britain. And you know what? I don't think we've vetted a single one of them. Uh, and the problem with multiculturalism is that it leads to divided communities. It's quite different to multiracialism. That's fine. That can work very happily and extremely well. But we finished up with very divided communities. And I'm, I'm sorry to say, but we have a, now a fifth column living inside these European countries. And surely, surely an American audience seeing this horrendous thing happening in Westminster today should start to say to itself that when Donald Trump tries to put in place vetting measures, he's doing it to protect your country. And frankly, all those people out protesting in Fifth Avenue in New York and elsewhere, they need to have a good, long, hard think about what they're doing. Frankly, if you open your door to uncontrolled immigration from Middle Eastern countries, you are inviting in terrorism. Nigel, um, I agree with you. But there are people that disagree with us, and mm. they will say things like xenophobic, Islamophobic, and throw these words out here. Is it really too much to ask that if you come from a country that practices Sharia, whose values directly contradict those of the United States and our Constitution, or the values of, of Western Europe and the United Kingdom, is it really too much to ask that we vet you and know that you're going to bring safety and security with you as you visit, have the honor of visiting our great countries? No, it's just plain common sense. And what you didn't mention there, Sean, of course, is attitudes towards women. Uh, because in a lot of these countries that we're talking about, women, you know, frankly, aren't even second-class citizens. Um, and just look at what we've seen happening in parts of Sweden, in parts of Germany, in terms of sexual crime statistics. Uh, we, oh, uh, outrageous. I, I tell you what's happening here. You know, the idea that this whole country tonight is united, which is what we're hearing from our leaders, I'm not sure is true. I think the British people want some answers from our leaders as to what they're now going to do. And why isn't a man like Farage in charge in his country? Why isn't he the prime minister? Well, because like Maryland, you've got a majority of people who are looking for a free lunch. These are the same people who refused to acknowledge in the past century. They had two very strong conservative prime ministers in Winston Churchill, and yet at the end of World War II, and even before the Japanese had surrendered, he was thrown out of office. All right, thanks for uh, you winning the bulk of the war for us, but we're going to go back and vote for a free lunch. And then Margaret Thatcher came along, and she saved that country, and she's viewed as the devil. I was in a pub in Washington, about six blocks from the Capitol. It's called the Dubliner. And I was sitting in there having some dinner with a former fiancé of mine a few years back. I guess it was about four years ago, Memorial Day weekend. And we got to chatting with some tourists who were from England. And they couldn't stand her. They were explaining to us about, you know, oh, well, you know, she did this and she did that. And people couldn't get this and they couldn't get that. In other words, she saved the country from bankruptcy. And they were angry about that. They were angry because they couldn't get all of their free benefits. They, 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 well, I think it's free. And so a man like Farage, who's talking sense and trying to preserve what they have, he is, he's got a very small constituency, just as Governor Hogan in Maryland, who's a Republican, has a very small constituency. 
and he can't control a legislature that is going to turn his state into a sanctuary state. It's one in the same. And it's because after governments, Charles Krauthammer mentioned this a few weeks ago about Obamacare when he was speaking on Brett Baer's program, Special Report on Fox. Once you give somebody what you call an entitlement, even though they aren't necessarily, there's no right to a lot of, at least in our Constitution, what you're giving them, it's very difficult to take it back. Very difficult. And I have a friend who worked in the Justice Department for, and of all people, he was an assistant. He was the profiler. Uh, when he had a boss at the Justice Department who later was rejected for the Supreme Court, Robert Bork, Bork hired my friend. When he would have meetings, after a meeting, he would say to my friend, all right, what's your take on that individual and the discussion? My friend told me a story about working in Washington, and he said the same thing. Once you give someone something, you can't take it back because then there's an expectation. And you think about every major social program in this country, why it's still on the books even though we're $20 trillion in debt. Why is it that when the president talks about cut, cut, cutting the uh, community development block grants, you hear all of this gnashing and wailing of teeth at people being upset all over the country in, in local governments because they expect it. And it's made their job easier because then they don't have to go out and raise local taxes. Look at every other benefit people get. If you tried to cut the, uh, the SNAP program, you know, which is food stamps, we used to call it, but they changed the name because they were trying to clean up the reputation. It's like liberals who want to be called progressives because liberals drove the car into the ditch. But you couldn't pull back on these programs. It doesn't matter that it will bankrupt the country and then people will be sitting along the side of the road saying, oh, come on, I'm not getting my check anymore. Because our actions bankrupted the country, that's why. And it's, 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 you, you can have all of the sensical talk you want, and the other side is just going to point the finger at you and say you're mean-spirited for talking about cutting these programs, and you're mean-spirited and a bigot because you don't like Muslim jihadists, and you don't like illegal immigrants, and this is where we are. And I guess the question becomes, is there ever going to be a way to turn it around without doing so by just simply putting somebody in charge who says, I am ruling by fiat for the time being, and this is the way it is. And if you whine, I'm going to kick you right square in your bottom. And unfortunately, that may be the only way Western governments can turn things around. We're coming up on a break. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. It's 36. If I could, I'll mention our friends at Waddell and Reed this morning. I'm getting to an age where I have to think a lot about what I'm going to do. The day may come when I can no longer work, and it's getting closer and closer and closer. Or I may no longer want to work. But Ellen Reed will help you manage money, and they've been doing it since 1937. One of the oldest firms in the country offering mutual funds. And, in fact, what Ellen Reed offers two mutual fund families. They are investing by a conservative nature. Obviously, they know what they're doing, being in business for eight decades. They take a planning approach. They look at each piece of the puzzle for you. In fact, they'll try to work with you on proper expectations and also on your individual needs and goals. At Waddell and Reed, they help people manage money. And at Waddell and Reed, they take planning personally. News is next from Fox. Here on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com, a top story with Bill Colley. One more hour of our program still to come. And a lot of news coming out of the state legislature in Boise in the waning days of session.